Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Neil Paulman. I'm ready for another great episode of the Life Optimized Podcast, where we help you optimize life, fitness, and business and your mindset. We have a great guest today. We have Frank Losa from Ketone Aid. Yeah. And he's going to discuss with us the, the great new onset of exogenous ketones and what the differences are um, with the different products that are out there and what you should be looking for and what benefits you can and may not expect from them. Also, we're going to do a deep dive also what we've now expanded on from just a typical exogenous ketone drinks to alcohols and energy drinks and what the future may hold in terms of benefits for the exogenous ketones. And then we'll go, go and explain what ketosis is and go from there. So I'm going to let Frank, thanks for hopping on the podcast and uh, really excited to get your expertise on this because we were just talking about before we get a lot of questions. Most of the answers are pretty straightforward. Some are still, is this the new area um, kind of not definitive, but first right. introduce yourself, tell us your background, and then we're going to do uh, start doing a dive into ketosis and where exogenous ketones fit in. Sure. So yeah, Frank Yosa, CEO of Ketone Aid, but also uh, a new company called Hard Ketones. And we're going to get to that towards the end. So make sure you either jump ahead or don't miss that. And that's the alcohol alternative um, hard ketones where you actually get a buzz and raise your ketones. Um, as far as my background, it all started with uh, Dr. Richard Veach, this book right here, Ketones, the Fourth Fuel. Dr. Veach is right here. He was my wife's godfather, and he'd been working on find a, trying to find a way to put the ketogenic diet into a pill. Basically, can we get some of, not all, some of the benefits of a ketogenic diet and your body making ketones endogenously? Can he you know, invent a pill or a drink that allows you to drink and have many of the same benefits. So he's the creator and inventor of the ketone ester molecule that my company, you know, sells today. Um, and the so there's this umbrella concept of exogenous ketones. And that means that you're drinking your ketones as opposed to endogenous ketones, which means you're making your own ketones, which means you're doing a multi-day fast or you're, um, or you're doing a ketogenic diet for two or three weeks. So you deplete your body of enough sugar that your body goes into this emergency panic mode and decides to burn your fat reserves. And you can run on this different fuel source called ketones. Mainly the body can run on ketones or glucose, but most people aren't familiar with running on ketones or what their body would do because there's a McDonald's around every corner. So Dr. Vichy used to always say, so, uh, Many people in the modern day aren't used to running on ketones, but ketones is a more efficient fuel source. Think of it like coal and on a fire, as opposed to kindling, sugar being kindling burns up really, really fast, but then it's very, you know, I don't know if it has more pollutants than, than coal, but the, the ketones are a much more um, efficient fuel source. And some people have what's called a glucose impairment in their system that they don't even realize where the body is only able to function with using up 70%, 80% of their brain energy um, with glucose. And the last 20% is just a void, brain fog. Uh, ketones use a different pathway. So it helps fill that void from you know 70, closer to 100%. And the, but the, mo the more that your brain is already being fueled 100%, the less that exogenous ketones will do for you because it's not a stimulant. It doesn't take you to 110, 120. It's not a, a caffeine or, or something like that. It just helps you bring you your brain back to, you know, 100%. So we have this thing called exogenous ketones where you drink your ketones. So you're skipping the fat burning step. So a lot of people think that you drink ketones and you lose weight. And some companies will say, drink this drink and you're in ketosis, this phrase ketosis. Um, but the tricky thing is ketosis can be defined by some scientists as ketones in your blood. So you can actually get a $30, $50 ketone meter and test your blood to see that there's ketones in there. Or some people will define it as uh, burning fat to make ketones. So, uh, so the companies say, drink ketones and, there's, and you're in ketosis. But then the consumer hears that and they think, drink ketones and I'm burning fat but it doesn't do that. It literally skips that fat burning stage and puts ketones into your bloodstream, which has other benefits, but 
it just doesn't burn fat for you. <laughs> um, It'll give you energy, but it won't, you're not getting the benefit of, of like the fat burning, losing weight part, right. which is kind of gets thrown out there. I mean, this is again, with any new type of product or category, there's always kind of like fake things out there and misunderstandings and I, uh, marketing kind of mis exaggerations we'll get into in a little bit in terms of the marketing versus the reality of some of these products in a little bit. I mean, <clears throat> So it's, it's it's so bad real quick that Shark Tank had to actually have a one minute uh, blip in their episode saying we never invested in Shark Tank keto diet pills. I mean, probably a billion emails have been sent out about keto diet pills and people ask me, oh, why did you give them my email address? I'm like, I didn't give, give you email addresses. And they have these these images of Shark Tank all around these people saying that all five Shark Tank invested in this keto diet pills that were burn fat for you. It's all fake. And then Amazon has 20, 30 companies claiming to be these keto diet pills. And they take a shred of science and then they just extrapolate it and just make up BS. And it's just a waste. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I mean, I deal with it. I mean, I've dealt with it today already. There's so much misinformation and people just don't know where to go. And if if it's cool and it looks good on social media, they're like, oh, that must be right. Or there's some, it's become very, it's it's horrible in a way. But at least people are trying to look into their own health, but it, it, it's a lot of misinformation. And we, that's why I, part of the reason I started the podcast yeah. is to kind of get experts on that at least can clarify for people what they're going to get and not going to get. Um, just really quickly, I mean, yes, you obviously you're going to get certain benefits, some of the benefits you get from the keto diet in terms of the, some of the brain benefits you may get, some of the anti-inflammatory benefits you may get, the energy benefits you may get. Similarly, from exogenous, some exogenous ketones in the ketone diet, um, there's now... I'm, there's also, also, appetite okay. suppression is a big one. So it won't burn fat for you, but you can take a tiny amount of ketone ester and skip breakfast or yeah. and or... And skipping lunch and skipping breakfast you know, many would argue <laughs> will, will help with weight loss. Yeah. So there's, there's definitely a side, but it's not, you're just, again, the main differentiation is you're not burning fat, but again, the, some of the advantage of the exogenous ketone products is you can get a lot of the other good benefits that are out there without having to not eat the carbs. Um, and I know people, again, I'll let you comment on that. I mean, you, I've seen a lot of friends and it happened to me when I was doing more ketone monitoring that you do a keto monitor, like you would, if you're in the keto diet, you're, some people get really good results in high ketone bursts with doing the exogenous ketones like they would if they were doing a keto diet, but then they'll also dissipate usually somewhat quickly because yeah, let's you're not go maintaining over that. the diet. Yeah, so you can take the exogenous ketones in particular, our ketone ester, which is a chemical bond of beta hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ketone bound to something called R13 butanediol, and it enters into the bloodstream as a ketone ester, then separates. So you have a fast release of BHB ketones in your blood, and then you have a slow release of the R13 going through the liver, and 80% of it makes BHB. So if you were to test your blood ketones every 15 minutes, you'd see a quick spike that would, you know, depending on how much you take, uh, about $5 worth will give you a one millimolar rise. And people that are on a ketogenic diet might say that, you know, 0.5 would be in a ketogenic state. So it'll spike and then it'll go down really quickly. And a lot of people misunderstand that. And they see that chart and they say, oh, it only works for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. But what they misunderstand is that ketones don't do anything in the bloodstream. It's when it leaves the blood that it actually starts to work. And people notice the, the mental benefits for three or four hours, but then it does have other secondary signaling benefits that could be 12, 24 hours, you know, building mitochondria. Uh, actually, a paper just came out saying that it, uh, one dose of the ketone ester increased EPO similar to a week worth of uh, altitude training. So in Tour de France, people go to altitude in part, you know, to build natural EPO, which is illegally when taken, you know, exogenously, when you take EPO exogenously, that's not allowed. Um, but they go to altitude training to build their muscle, uh, muscle and, and, and blood, you know, strength. And they, yeah, a paper just came out that it was this, the same as a week long uh, altitude training. Yeah, I was going to mention that in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some more and more benefits. There are a lot more studies on the benefits of exogenous ketones. But I want to take a step back, make sure people understand. So yeah. when you're on a ketone diet, a keto diet, you're going to produce what are called ketone bodies. 
or ketone. And then there are different forms. There's acetoesters, there's uh, acetoacetate, there's BHB, which is the one that's mostly used in exogenous products called beta-hydroxybutyrate, beta um, which is, a, from a, I don't want to speak here, which is a derivation of what your product is, correct? Well, the product, uh, yeah, is a beta-hydroxybutyrate beta attached to as a chemical ester bond of with R13-butanediol, yeah. Okay, so um, that's the one that's usually the, the one that these companies are using. Um, so they're in a way producing the um, they're producing the, the ketone body in a lab, um, which is giving which is giving you the benefits that you of what's produced when you do a keto diet. Right. Um, and then that and then now we're going now we're going to jump back into the benefits. So what would you say when people ask you what are the top two or three benefits from using a ketone product, right? What, what would you tell them? So, uh, number one, recovery. That's the the easiest to recreate. They did a clinical trial where they simulated a Tour de France. Now, these guys were taking huge amounts, so let's not mislead you. And they took huge amounts, and then you take tiny amounts and expect the same results. But over a two week period where they simulated a Tour de France, they found a fifteen percent improvement in the group that took ketone esters and they took it immediately after their workout and then before bed. So recovery is the, you know, is the number one brainless way to take it. I say brainless because we'll get into this later. Taking it during the performance and pre-workout is much, much more difficult because you have so many different variables and you've got glucose competing against ketones and, you know, do you do it fasted? And we can get into that. The second, um, way is just for mental cognition. So a CEO trying to just have less brain fog and just be sharper without that caffeine type stimulant, because caffeine is a false sense of energy and it's a stimulant. So what goes up will come down in a few hours when that runs out. And then the third way is for sleep. Unexpectedly, people are taking it immediately before bed and they're reporting 30, 40 minutes more deep sleep. And they're taking anywhere from a dollar to three, four dollars worth. Um, if you take too much, it'll mess up your sleep because it then turns into an energy as opposed to a signal. But people will send in their aura ring data saying, hey, this is my sleep all week. And then here's when I took the ketone ester and it just pops up 40 minutes. And then here's, you know, back to back to regular. So those would be the top three, brain recovery and sleep. Now, can you, I mean, I guess you could you can overdose on anything, but can you, because you mentioned that the higher doses in terms of recovery, can you take can your body tolerate much? I mean, I know I'll push the doses in certain my patients, but is there too much of this stuff where you, again, I, again, it depends on cases. You obviously don't want to become too stimulated sure. if you're trying to go to bed or so on. You want to do lower dose. You want to dose it, but can you in theory take too much? I guess you can't take too much of anything, but so well, yeah. what's the appropriate dosing is, is the question here. Well, the, the there is a paper where someone was trying to lose weight for a wedding and they were uh, a diabetic. They were on metformin. They took $100 a day worth, so three bottles of KE4 equivalent. Um, and, you know, yeah, they ended up in the hospital. Oh, they also said uh, they took it with metformin, which also lowers blood sugar. So they just took massive, massive amounts. Oh, sorry. Also during a three-day fast. So three-day fast, taking massive amounts wow. of ketones. okay. Like little... it was just like, just, and it just- That's Too much of a good thing. Doesn't work that way. Um, the FDA- generally recognized as safe is 75 grams of active. So it's like two and a half of these bottles, but that is still $75 worth and just way, way, way too much and not necessary. Most people are taking, um, initially we sold the drink with Dr. Beach's vision that you would have to take the entire bottle based on how much your body can make of ketones. But then people started using the cap. The cap itself became the measuring tool and people are just taking one or two caps so most people will take one to two capfuls of the drink uh, once or twice a day, mm -hmm. always on an empty stomach. It doesn't work nearly as well when you have it fed. So a couple hours, one or two hours on both sides, empty stomach. You take one to two capfuls, usually women, one capful, men, one or two capfuls. Um, and if you take too much, what people notice is uh, that it drops their blood sugar too much. That's one thing that they've noticed, but it also sometimes makes them fall asleep. So they have, you know, too much energy. Just, it's kind of like if you just took a, a, on an empty stomach, just took straight glucose, you're going to have a spike of energy and a crash if you don't utilize that glucose. 
If you use a, if you take a gel packet and go for a run, you're fine. But you take a gel packet and you watch TV, you're going to have a spike and you'll you could fall asleep. So it's just like that. No, I told you, I was a I was a cap offender initially, and then I found my 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 sweet spot. Um, and I, I I do feel it much better in terms of fasted than not. Um, and I tend to do it instead of caffeine in the morning. I mean, I break. Um, it depends. Again, I've learned when to play with. I've learned when I need it for certain things. Depending on what I'm lo- using to look at looking looking to use it for, I, I use it. I dose it differently. And I also have a high tolerance at this point. So now you mentioned cognition, and that now, I mean, I'm probably getting asked about besides the recovery sports performance, which we're going to get into on the back end here. Um, I get more about the cognition than anything else because everybody wants that. Now that everybody's back at work, everybody wants that advantage again. Is this something that, again, it's probably, I give them the same answer in the sense, it's not something to take right before you need to do your task. You need to give it 90 minutes to an hour, 20 to uh, hour, two hours to work. Oh, uh, it'll, it'll work at, it'll, no, it'll work 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. yeah really, really quickly. It's stimulated where they can't focus? Well, no, no, no. That's okay. Uh, you might be taking too, if you take too much, then you can have your ketones can go too high and your like vision will just not be able to focus. But that's when you take like an entire bottle. But if you're just taking, 10 to 15 minutes before a podcast, um, 10 to 15 mLs right before a podcast, yeah, you would take it, you know, five, 10 minutes. It's, it's pretty instant. Yeah. And then, so what do people expect? So to me, when I, again, when people discuss brain function, cognition, nootropic is a new buzzword now. Yeah. Is it, I know it definitely helps people think clearly or clearer. Um, is it also can help, will it help somebody with brain fog? Well, yeah, so it'll it'll help those things, but it also tends to do other things such as increase creativity. It's as if it's like fueling the brain, different parts of the brain with different fuels that suddenly you're just at a brainstorming meeting and just new words come out that you haven't pulled out since high school, you know, word retrieval or just ideas. It's just different. People expect when they think of nootropics, they think of caffeine. They think of, you know, this uh, energetic you know, spaz type person, but it's not like that. It's actually a calm ninja type focused energy. I so like it. It's a little bit, it's a different feeling. And some people that have quit caffeine to go over to the ketones. I got this one lady, she said, oh, it didn't work for me. And then after half an hour of talking, I find out that she normally takes six cups of coffee a day. And she went to zero and just took the ketones, a, a tiny amount of ketones. And I said, and you felt nothing. She's like, okay. She's like, yeah, felt nothing. What do you normally feel when you have no caffeine? Oh, I've got brain fog, headaches, you know, uh, irritable. Okay, you felt nothing. That's, you know, that's the best it can do. You're comparing six cups of a stimulant drug to, you know, a tiny amount of, of something that's just, you know, a healthier brain fuel. It just brought her to baseline. So, you know, over time, once she gets off of her caffeine addiction, then the ketone ester will, able, will be able to help her take, take her to the next level, I think. I understand what, what you need and you can use it with other nootropics if you need to just not um it works really well but um, it, it, the ketones will actually multiply the caffeine but you have to watch out for that because it can be a bad thing some companies say oh it's a great thing ketones and caffeine together so uh, what it does is it increases the delivery of the ketone of the caffeine across the blood brain barrier so it's not like a buy two get one free where you have two cups of coffee but you only drink one it has twice the stimulant, twice the drug that's getting to your brain, and then twice the crash afterward, twice the adrenal fatigue and messed up sleep. And I know we're jumping around a little bit, but with the exogenous ketones, there's this other category that's been around for a few years before us called ketone salts. And that is beta hydroxybutyrate, the same ketone, but bound to a salt molecule, meaning uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium. But the problem with that is that most of the companies will sell it only with caffeine. And so they want you to feel it. Well, what you're feeling is the, is the caffeine. You're not feeling the ketones. And the ketone salts are far inferior. And people think that the ketone esters are wildly expensive. But on a per gram basis, it's actually less expensive than the quality ketone salts. It just happens to be that you can take more of it. If you took the, the equivalent amount of this bottle of ketone salts, it'd be the same as a restaurant shaker of salt, like a three or four inch restaurant shaker of sodium, just 
not possible. That could, I don't know if it'll kill you, but it just would really mess you up, make you be inflamed. You can't put your rings on. So that's yeah. the, the ketone salts. And the salts taste horrible, usually. Well, um, the ketone ester, the ketone ester does not taste good. It's an acquired taste. It's very, very strong. It tastes like a, a cross between a burnt tire mixed into with tequila, but then people get used to it and they say that they like it. But if you expect, if you expect orange juice though, you know, you take a shot of the ketone ester and you're like, oh, wow. I don't think, you know. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, maybe I'm used to it. Yeah, you're, you're um, used to it. Yeah, you, I mean, when you attribute good benefits to something that's rough, um, people get used to it and they say, oh, I even like it. But you have to manage expectations. If you go on Amazon and you don't see that warning and you just you just order it, People are like, what in the world am I doing here? And sometimes I put in my brain smoothie in the morning. So maybe that helps me out too. I, um, I wouldn't suggest putting in smoothies, honestly. I think it drastically lowers the delivery of it. Okay. So it's not as cost effective. You can get more bang for the buck. Okay. Um, I'll yeah. just do it. Um, I want to, we're going to do a little deep dive into science here. And then we're going to, um, in terms of brain health and, and two things, a, what it does, a lot of the exogenous ketones do and where it's coming more into the medical field too, where I'm using, I'm using it as a doctor is it works on something called the NLRP3 inflammasome, which helps decrease inflammation. May have, they're finding that now that causes a lot of the brain, um, brain inflammation, uh, neurodegenerative issues, even insomnia. So I'm finding, I don't know if you can speak to it, because I mean, there are some studies that are showing it now, but it helps people. Again, I know you mentioned it to me in our conversation before, it can help with sleep. And I think that may be part of why it does that. But it also is great for people with, unfortunately, some type of a brain issue, be it anything from a concussion acutely to somebody who has a, a longer term neurogenitive issue because of, again, the way it works on the brain. So what's right. great about these ketones is that it, it, they work in multiple different ways and give you multiple desired effects. And for something that has very minimal side effects to it, very minimal, and again, the taste isn't great, but it doesn't really interact with anything. Um, so it has a lot of very, again, I'm gonna, I like things that are clean, relatively quote unquote clean that aren't gonna interact, have pretty good upside with minimal downside. You're not gonna usually crash on this unless you take a huge amount of this of a, of a ketone that you're not supposed to. So it has that benefit to it. I mean, again, exact ketone diet had been used for seizure patients for many, many years, which is part of where the whole keto diet reinvention came from initially. Um, and now we're just, again, we can extrapolate that to using the exogenous ketones in that respect as well. Um, yeah. So one thing I can talk, talk about there that's really important is, you know, is taking exogenous ketones just like the ketogenic diet? One, one thing we have to make clear is the ketogenic diet has two very important components. One is lowering your sugar intake. So it's like reducing half of the problem, you know, the problem, which is sugar. Sugar is the problem of everything, reducing the sugar, and then it helps you raise the ketones. When you take exogenous ketones, it only does half of that equation. It just raises the ketones, but doesn't do anything for the fact that you just ate cake a half an hour ago. So what we recommend in the protocols aren't necessarily to go ketogenic completely. You don't, I don't think you necessarily have to do that, but it is very important that you try to lower your sugar intake because people will take orange juice and they, they, they take the ketone ester, zero. Like might not even notice any benefit except for sports where you're doing the dual fuel, you know, maybe. Yeah. But for your brain cognition, yeah, mixing it with orange juice is just, it's just not going to work. So it's really important that the, the sugar is creating that inflammation. So you want to, you know, get that low and then the ketone ester helps reduce inflammation. So you want to get the, that helps you get more bang for your buck. And you're mentioning concussions. Concussions is the same brain energy gap problems of all the, this brain fog and all these other you know uh, uh, patients that you've been talking about. They have what's called a brain energy gap where the brain can only be fueled 70, 80% by glucose and they have this void. That's what happens with the concussions. The glucose can't make it into the system. So they, they have brain fog. Uh, but then the ketones bypass that blockage and just fuel the brain and brings them, you know, closer to baseline. I've even warned some NFL athletes, more of their coaches and doctors that they could have a concussion and then they're given some brain tests to see if they can come back. If they took ketone ester, they would pass the brain test, but it does not mean that they're healed. It just happens to be that the brain test, which is a computer test is one way to, to determine whether the person is is healed, but it doesn't really, it's a false test. So got to watch out for that. But um, yeah, and also with long COVID, people that are having brain fog with long COVID, 
they're starting to find that COVID and long COVID also has to do with the system blocking glucose utilization. Your system can't use sugar and it's just re resulting in you having no fuel source. You give it a fuel source and that's it. Uh, and one thing that's funny is COVID, there was even a paper that showed that COVID was blocking the body's ability to get into a ketogenic diet. So it was actually blocking the ketones naturally endogenously from being created. So you have all this, you know, you have COVID and you're not eating and then your, uh, your ketones would normally go up because it's not eating, but something, I don't fully understand it. Something is blocking the system from actually making those ketones to reach the brain. So that was a really interesting finding. Uh, it, there's, I think as we, there's so much study now going on on, again, on ketones, the diet and exogenous ketones. I'm not sure if you're familiar now. It's really amazing how far it's grown. And I'm, of course, I'm blanking on his name as a, a psychiatrist from, uh, from Harvard, who's now promoting the keto diet and in terms of all psychiatric illnesses. This should be a, a major component where now they're studying that and exogenous ketones as a component to healing psychiatric issues. There's some beginning data there. It's not perfect, but it's, it's growing, which I think is, I'm not a big fan of traditional psychiatric medicines. That's a whole nother story for another day. But um, anyway, let's get, let's do the, the dive into sports forms because there's so much information. Some of it is still conjecture some has been disproven you mentioned again the, the if it does actually increase erythropoietin epo for people who are uh, long-term athletes and i mean it, there's so many different questions is it better for again you mentioned the benefit of recovery that's we know is it question is it does it increase performance is it only for sprint athletes versus endurance athletes right where, okay where I do we fall on all that stuff so the, the first paper that came out on ketone esters for sports, they, sh they squeaked out a 2% performance gain. So sure, you could just point to that paper, but um, I don't like any of the protocols that these papers are working with. And they're all doing huge amount of ketones and a huge amount of glucose. They're doing this dual fuel because they're like more is better and they're ramming into the system and they're trying to squeak out performance gain, but that's not how my athletes are using it. And many athletes, you know, we sponsor the number one cycling team in the world because they were using it for three to four years secretly. And I said, hey, come on, let's, you know, let's be public about this. Why take it secretly? And ultimately, you know, enough of the Peloton was already using it that they said, okay. So we sponsor the number one cycling team in the world, Quick Step. And um, some of the athletes, these Tour de France athletes, they will not take it during the ride because it drops their blood sugar so much because they're taking way too much. And then they say that they feel flat. They say, hey, I don't have that upper speed. I don't have that top speed. I feel like I'm only able to be at 95% as opposed to 100% you know, full on sprint. And that's one of the other downsides of the ketone ester is it will reduce your top speed. The ketone ester in general is designed for distance. Uh, people think of it for distance performance. However, we do have athletes that are doing, you know, they just want this one guy, just Martin Christofferson, the son of Travis Christofferson, who wrote this book, just won the world push contest for bobsled. So that's like super speed. You know, he uses a, a ton of ketones. Um, I got to better understand how he uses it. I'm sure he doesn't down it. I don't think he would down it right before his sprint, um, but possibly there's some potential that were might actually might help you increase at the right amount, help you increase glucose utilization, but too much blocks it. But for the most part, it's for marathon runners and distance runners. But my protocols are, if you already do a fasted workout, then it's a no brainer. You have a fasted workout, you're burning your own fat. Uh, you take a tiny amount of ketones and they will notice the biggest improvement. And just, they just take, you know, $2 worth every hour or so, just a tiny amount, and they'll notice a, a big improvement. Um, it also works exponentially better at altitude, and that has to do with heart. There's a lot of heart studies, heart attack studies using ketone ester and hypoxia. It just makes the heart more efficient, and that's more important at altitude. It also works much better on hill climbs. So just the slow twitch muscles have more mitochondria, and the ketones fuel the mitochondria, whereas the twitch, the sprint, muscles have zero mitochondria, so they fuel those less. Um, so it's a, it's a no-brainer for sport. If someone already does faceted workouts and they take a tiny amount, then it's a no-brainer. But if someone is already a glucose-based athlete and they take 300 calories of glucose and then they try to take 
uh, on another day, 20 calories of ketones. And then they're like, oh, it, it wasn't as good. Well, you're just not really comparing apples and apples. Um, so it's just a lot harder. Everyone has to write their own book. It can take a lot of time. Do not take ketone ester on game day. We've had people drop out of races because they took it wrong or took too much and their blood sugar tanked and they had to drop out. Um, but it's trickier pre-workout and during the workout, but we have protocols online and then we have videos of different people of how they've taken it. Some people will mix it with a little bit of glucose. Some people will mix it with a lot of glucose. Some people will just use it at the end of the workout. So they're doing a five hour race, three or four hour, you know, four or five, your brain stops utilizing the glucose and you start having uh, just, your brain is just not sharp brain fog. So some people will just add the ketone ester there. It fills up the brain, takes you to hundred percent. You feel like the first half hour of your race. So there's a multitude of ways, different ways to take it. And it's not just for ketogenic athletes. And sometimes ketogenic athletes say, I don't need exogenous ketones because I already make my own, but that's ridiculous because glucose based people, they make their own glucose, but they're still sucking down gel caps. I mean, gel packets. So it's not for only ketogenic athletes and it's not, um, you know, both groups can use it. And then, so if I'm Joe, I'm an, I'm an average athlete. I want, I want to go to the gym for an hour a day, three days, four days a week. Is it, is this something I should be taking as part of my regimen? Is it more of that's more in the recovery niche that we're looking at it then? Depends on what your goals are. If your goal, if you were already going to go to those five days and you were already going to work out for an hour, you know, the ketone ester might make you lift a few percentage more, you know, why bother? So then that person might focus on recovery. Hey, I go to work afterward and I just worked out for an hour and your brain is sometimes a little bit taxed. They'll take it afterward for recovery, not to eat that smoothie, that 400 calorie smoothie after their workout and just stay fasted for a couple hours and mentally sharp. So they might take it post-workout. As far as, you know, why would you take it pre-workout? Um, you could, but there's, it might be more fun. You know, your workout might be more fun. Your recovery in between sets might be noticeable. So if you normally wait two minutes, you might be able to wait one minute because the recovery is quicker. Um, so it depends on what your goals are. If you're trying to, you know, just build more muscle mass, I don't know that it'll, you might lift a few percentage more, but I don't know that that's necessarily going to build more muscle. But if you're, if you take it afterward and it helps you recover, and then you're doing four hard workouts a week instead of two hard workouts, that's where the, the benefit really can start to add up. So now let's go into what happens when something gets popular, you get into companies making claims that it can't back up or you get competition who says things that it can't do. Right. Um, again, compared to ketone age, we know is a, the ketone ester, which has its advantages. What do people need to be looking for? We, we talked about the ketone salts in terms of that they're a lot of caffeine and they're not as efficient. What do people need to be looking at to be an educated consumer in terms of the, the ketone market right now? Yeah, the ketone salts, for the most part, they just don't work. Some people will use them when they're entering into a ketogenic diet, but then the benefit is actually the salt content. So you need massive amounts of salt when you enter in, into a ketogenic diet. So then they take these ketone salts. They think the benefit is the ketones but it's actually just the salt content. So those just are worthless, but there's new companies out there that are venture backed um, that are making these claims of, uh, you know, ketone ester replacement. And it's just a long story, but uh, I'll call them out. Yeah. HVMN is one of the companies they came out with. They used to have the ketone ester. They lost the license, but they got a $6 million contract from the government to do ketone ester trials. And they're like, Oh crap, we got $6 million to, to study a, a compound we don't have anymore, we better go out there and find something else and just, you know, play spin on it. And what they do, what's called science hijacking, where you say, oh, look at this science that says if your blood ketones are two millimolar using ketone ester, then it does X, Y, and Z. Therefore, our drink, which might raise your ketones the same amount, they just assume that the benefit applies across the board, but it just doesn't. So all of their papers are citing, you know, most of their papers are citing ketone ester as opposed to citing, you know, their own papers or their own molecule. And that molecule, 1,3-butane dial, that's, you know, is not a ketone ester. It's, it's half of the molecule. That ketone ester, that ketone product is not a ketone ester and it's more of a sedative. It makes you more relaxed. And we'll get into that. I sell it as an ethanol-free alcohol beverage 
but they sell it as a sports performance. I say not to be used in sport won't help your performance. And they say, you know, take three shots of this and go to, get on a bicycle and go 80 miles per hour downhill, you know, and you'll be buzzed. They claim you don't get buzzed. You try it yourself. Tell me you don't get buzzed and you take, you know, three shots of that stuff. Um, but yeah, their website implies that the $6 million is somehow tied to their product and they'll even be on podcasts and the person interviewing will say, will refer to their product as a ketone ester four or five times and the CEO doesn't correct them. So they want this misinformation to be out there thinking that it's the ketone ester, but it's just not, it just doesn't work nearly as well. And I actually had a customer email me, call me saying, Hey, I've been customer for three years and I'm sorry, but I tried two other products and they have the same things, what looks like the same stuff on the label. And they just weren't, it was a night and day difference. They just didn't work. Can you explain it to me? And I had to do, well, I didn't have to, I got them on a podcast and say, Hey, other people might want to know this information. And we went through, you know, the differences of the molecules and just a lot of misinformation makes it really confusing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just um, when you're reading the lit, you want to find a product that's a true ketone ester. I don't know how the other companies label the product. I know some will say they're a salt. Some will use some other amorphous term to kind of just to kind of hedge their bet a little bit. Um, you do, again, you do the, the studies that are out there that show benefit are true esters. Um, and then, and those are the ones that are going to help with cognition, recovery, brain health. Again, we're going to get into a second, what the other, the butane diol product right. is, has mostly what it does or what it can cause. But there are um, two products on Amazon that claim ketone ester that are, that are not w one it, what one is a powder and they claim that it has ketone ester, but they won't tell you which exact molecule it is. And they won't tell you if there's even 0.1 gram of it into their, into their thing. They won't tell you the, the quantity. So that one's completely fake. And then there's another one that says that it's straight up uh, ketone ester, not a salt. And we tested it and it had zero ketone ester in it. So even that is kind of, kind of con confusing. Yeah, unfortunately, this whole area in wellness right now has become the wild, wild west, and then you can't the the government can't keep up with kind of the people who just kind of make stuff up as they go along. Yeah. It's not fair to the consumer. That's why, again, as I said to you before, we want to kind of get people educated. So you want to look for ketone esters. You want to be able to prove what the esters are. They should have on the website what it is, like any other product. It doesn't tell you what it is. Well, they a lot of times will say "quote unquote" proprietary formula. Oh yeah, I don't do that. I never do that. No proprietary. You, gotta, you always got to like say, "Hmm, what's going on here?" Maybe there's something they're trying to hide. And the ketone so salts do that. They confuse you. They say 12 grams of proprietary formula, and ketones is one of those. But then five of the grams is leucine. So they make it look like people look at it quickly and they say. 12 grams of ketones. Like, no, it's a proprietary blend and they hide the amount of ketones that are actually in there. And yeah. Lucy, yeah, leucine's an amino acid. So just for people, for the people out yeah. there. So now let's get into what you've been showing us for the been leading up to for the last 40 minutes or so here. Um, where is the art of ketone esters and the butane dial going to? Because I know there's now right. other products that are coming, coming off of that. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. let's talk about that app, the uh, the the drink that you've been showing us for the last forty five minutes here. This is I mean, the... I've tried it. I like it. I am not. A, I'll admit, I am not a huge alcohol drinker anymore. I like it. I feel different on that than I do when I have any other form of alcohol. I feel I have no hangover. I don't know if that's what you're claiming or not. I have no hangover with it. I felt I slept the best. I, I, I I'll sleep better with that, which again, probably goes with the ketone benefits. So yeah. explain to people about the ketone alcohol and what the yeah. differences are and what's good about it. So the ketone ester is a bond of two ingredients, the beta hydroxybutyrate and this R13 butane dial. And the R13 butane dial goes through the liver and 80% of it converts to ketones. And I asked Dr. Veach, hey, why not just give 25% more of the R13 butane dial? Just give that if 80% of it turns to ketones. And his answer was epic. He said, the mice were stumbling. The mice were drunk. So then they threw that out. And that's when I said, oh, I think some humans might want, might want a little bit of a buzz. Now, the, the amount to make them actually stumble was probably like, you know, I don't know, not half their body weight, but just huge, huge quantities. But um, the R13 butane dial is a new type of alcohol, which is a really, really confusing concept because they don't real many people don't realize that Ethanol is the only alcohol that humans have ever drank for 2000 years. So beer, vodka, wine, some people think of them as different types of alcohol. 
they're all the same alcohol. They're all ethanol based. If you distilled them all, they'd all be clear ethanol, same stuff that you put in your automobile. Um, so this is a whole new category. And so it's confusing. Is this an alcohol alternative? Is this alcohol free? Is this, so we called it ethanol free, but it's still technically an alcohol. And it's so much of a borderline that, that some companies actually, the one that I talked about before, sell it as a sports performance drink with no mention whatsoever of it being alcohol. And they can even sell it on Amazon because, you know, Amazon doesn't allow alcohol, but they make no reference to alcohol. So that's how much of a, a borderline it is. But it is a really, really neat drink. It doesn't, uh, ethanol, the problem with ethanol, Ethanol has many problems. But one problem is that it converts to acetaldehyde. And I might be pronouncing that wrong because I'm not a doctor, no, not a scientist. I, I, yeah, and perfect. That, that is the problem. That's what makes people, they're hyper addicted to that. That's what gives you the, destroys your body. That's the toxin. That's what you know, gives you the hangover, destroys your HRV score, makes it quote unquote, no longer worth it for some people to have one or two drinks because the next day they're just wrecked for a couple of days. So the R13 butane dial, would be amazing in and of itself if it just if it just converted to water and not acetaldehyde and still gave you a buzz. But this is actually one step better than that. It actually converts in the system and 80% of it converts to ketones, ketone bodies. So it skyrockets your ketones, but it doesn't give you the same mental clarity and sports performance benefits as the KE4. It makes some people slur their words. Um, it gives you a little bit of a buzz. It's shorter lived than a, you know, than a hard seltzer, a regular seltzer. Um, but it, it's a different type of buzz as well. It's less of an aggressive buzz. And also, you know, people when they have a regular beer, they have one sip. And oftentimes it's a carbohydrate problem that their, their blood sugar will spike, the blood sugar will tank. And then that makes you have a craving. That's part of the craving. Part of the craving is the alcohol, but part of the craving is sugar. You'll have a blood sugar spike and then you'll take more to make it skyrocket. And you're just all night long going up and down, craving more and more. This stuff, you take one or two and you just feel content. And some people even use it to skip dinner because it actually makes you less hungry as opposed to ethanol that makes you you know, more hungry. So the buzz is different. It's a little bit shorter lived and there's just less compulsion to have just more and more of it. And the feedback that we've gotten is if you have one drink, it actually improves people's sleep because the ketones have gone up. But once you get to two or three, eh, your, your HRV scores are going to be uh, worse than if you had taken nothing. Now, compared to ethanol, we've got people sending a screenshot and they say, hey, here's two drinks of ethanol and their sleep score was you know 35. Here's two drinks of yours and their sleep score was you know 78. So drastic difference if you're comparing it to ethanol. But if you're comparing it to you know nothing, um, yeah, once you, if you take two or three, it, you might have a the slightest bit of a twinge in the morning headache from uh, from water dehydration. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, we've definitely progressed. We're now people are taking ketones and they're doing ketone alcohol and they're self evaluating their HRV and their sleep score, which is awesome. That they're looking at things actually benefit their health. Where five years ago it was just like just give me whatever the alcohol. Is. Things have definitely people are definitely understanding now that. A, that they're taking information in their own health and B, that they understand that alcohol can affect their sleep and their health and it's great. But, and then, so this is what your product is, has a lot more benefit to it than maybe other people don't realize is that not only is it elevating your ketones, not giving you a hangover, potentially helping with sleep. Um, it won't, sleep. we know now, again, study after study has come out. Um, I mean, Andrew Urban has been promoting this now for the last six months. His alcohol company is coming after him saying how bad alcohol is for sleep. And it's actually become a, a more mainstream idea. And this is kind of a way to circumvent that because you're just not going to get the same amount, the same issues that you do having traditional alcohol. Yeah. So I think this is, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm promoting it both. I like the product and also because scientifically there's a lot of benefit to it. Cause I mean, people are going to drink out some form of alcohol. It's just the, the way our society is built at this point, but so where, so it's a great product and I know you have different flavors out now, at least you did. Yeah. We have the, the regular seltzer, which is like a raspberry lime. Um, and then we had a champagne flavor. That one's currently sold out. We might bring that back. Okay, we champagne have a, flavor. Yeah. So sh we call it champs. So the idea, I made it for the Tour de France teams because they, they would celebrate with actual champagne, with actual ethanol in between their stages. And ethanol is just so 
horrible for your recovery of these races. And I said, well, why don't I give you something that is, you know, a sparkling water with a, like a hint of a champagne type flavor so that you can take something that actually will help your recovery and not, you know, destroy it. So I, so I made it for them. We have a GNT, but there's no gin in it. And then the tonic is always, you know, sugar-free. And then we just redid our ginger mule. We actually admitted that our first batch was good. Second batch, we tried to make it a little bit less sweet, but we just missed the mark and it just, it didn't taste good. So we just admitted it, said this doesn't taste good. So we put it on sale and liquidated it, but we just made the third batch yesterday and it tastes really good. Um, You know, zero aftertaste, like the older one. And we're working on our, our Holy grail is a beer. We're working on a beer. We have a beer that's, you know, in the fridge that we've made a 300 gallon thing of beer. Um, But we have to take out the ethanol from it. And then we have to add the R13 and we have to keep it low carb. So it's it's really tricky to to make beer, but ultimately we're gonna have a a ketogenic beer. It's also gonna be gluten free, um, and we are coming out with a bunch of different flavors on uh, on that front. That I think that'd be pretty popular. I have a feeling. Um, just I just just a slight suspicion there that that may do pretty well once you get the right formula down. Yeah. Um, do you ever have non alcoholic beer? It tastes disgusting. Well, um, no. Well. Non-alcoholic beers are getting better. Okay. Ours is going to be uh, about the same as those. So um, it's not going to be, our, our goal is to actually taste like a Miller light, Amstel light. It has to be a light beer because you can't have a full high carb, full no. Guinness type beer. And then, you know, add the stuff and it just kind of defeats the purpose. So it's just going to be a, a light, simple Coors Light type beer, which some people might, you know, if you're into 300 calorie you know, the essence of beer, microbreweries. Yeah, it's not going to taste like that. It's just going to be a very simple, light beer. So where is this ketone science heading to? I mean, again, now you're, you have performance, we have sleep, we're using it in medical purposes, you're making alcohol with it now. What, what is, is there a next level to this? Is there a next step where the science is going to go to? Well, I think the science is starting to figure out that glucose is the problem. So for the sports science, they're always using glucose and ketones. And I've been yelling at the researchers for a long time, but one researcher finally did glucose and ketones. And then they compared it to just ketones alone. And lo and behold, the ketones alone was much more, I don't know if the word is much more, but more statistically more efficient fuel source by itself. So I think that's where people are going to be like, oh, maybe we should try different you know, protocols instead of this mass blasting the system with with glucose and ketones. And the other thing that I think is going to be heading is trying to figure out whether ketones trigger endogenous production in a sport environment. So I said before, sitting on the couch, drinking ketones, it won't burn fat for you. But in a sport atmosphere, we have found on a facet ride versus a facet ride with a small amount of ketones that when they analyze their breath, they actually are able to detect more fat burning. So I think the, the future of the science might be how do we use, get rid of the glucose? Glucose is creating the problem, creating the inflammation. How can we find a way to just take small amount of, of, of ketones and you know find your benefit there? So that's for the sports side. You know, On the other side, we've got 12 clinical trials right now using ketone esters for just multiple different things. The FDA doesn't allow us to talk about like what conditions it's for, but it just there's just everything and anything anything that anything that a ketogenic diet has been researched for they're now saying oh i wonder if we can do that now with just ketones alone one problem with the research is that they don't want to change the diet of the customer of the client base of, of the people that are testing it out so the first round is going to might not be very impressive because they're going to be having people still eating their cakes pasta stuff stuff like that and taking ketone ester hoping that it overcomes that and I'm crossing my fingers that maybe they'll show a squeak of benefit, but the real benefit is going to be when they make a small diet change of lowering what I call the five deadly sins, fruit, rice, bread, pasta. And then I say fruit again, because fruit skyrockets your blood sugar, the same as the other stuff. And this is for people that have glucose problems. Okay. So if you have a glucose tolerance problem, yeah, fruit is not a good thing for you, but if you don't have a glucose problem, fruit might be fine for you. Um, but I think that the future is going to be clinical trials where they actually figure out that you need the entire system. You can't just down more ketones to cover up bad eating. Yeah. 
Is it, now that makes sense. I don't understand why they won't, but I, I know part of the reason probably is trying to measure diet or any diet component of any study is just a pain in the neck. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, they want to see that the ketone itself is working. Yeah, but it, but you're giving something that's blocking it. So then they're like, well, well then we'll give more. <laughs> it's like it just doesn't you're gonna work catch that way. Me too. It, it's yeah. not going to work because you want to make sure the ester is working, but it doesn't work as well unless they're doing the diet. So it's kind of like, okay, help me out here. Well, so there was one study where they did a brain study, 50 year old people, uh, humans, they did regular American diet versus a ketogenic diet. And then the brain was, you know, significantly, I don't know what exactly what they're testing receptors or the brain was just better. And then they did regular diet with a ketone ester and the brain was equally as good as the ketogenic diet. And I said, you needed a fourth arm, which was reduce the glucose to harm because the, the conclusion of the paper was glucose destabilizes the neural network. But the ketone ester group, you gave the same glucose. So if they just had a fourth arm, I think you would have seen standard American diet here. And then the ketogenic diet uh, by itself the same as the keto, the ketone ester with glucose. And then they would have seen another step up with keto, ketogenic, no, not a ketogenic diet and ester, but just low carb and ester. Um, so that's what, you know, time will tell. Thanks. It, it, I mean, again, we, the science is there, the underlying science is there with ketone bodies at this point that I think one, it, it, it's just going to grow and grow and grow just because we there's a nice strong foundation. There's other products that have done a lot more with a lot less. And we know that, again, we know the mechanisms. I think it's just not going to figure out the right, like you said, the right dosing with the right diet in the right person. And people not also not expecting the moon with it either, understanding what it does do and what it doesn't do. But I mean, the, but right now, I mean, like, like you said, you have elite athletes using it. You have executives using it. I mean, again, there's multiple use sets here, which is a good thing for a product as well. It's not just a one-shot uh pony here. So I really appreciate you coming on. So let people find out where they can learn more about you and I know, or, or is all the information that's out there through the web, through the company, where can people find out about the product ketone aid, about exogenous ketones, um, and when they can, how they can find out things that you guys are coming out with and when the champagne and the beer are back or the champagne comes back and the beer eventually, eventually comes out here so and uh, they can enjoy it. So people can order on ketoneaid.com. We also sell that other product, the hard ketones on that website. So K-E-T-O-N-E-A-I-D.com, ketoneaid. But we also have an Instagram account where people post uh, how they're using it. And uh, we also have a Facebook group where there's 3,000 actual users that post things that do work, but then they also post things that don't work. And they sometimes ask me, hey, Frank, this didn't work. And I say, hey, go post it on the group. And they say, they say you want me to post something that didn't work on a public forum? I'm like, yeah they're going to be more likely to believe the things that uh, the people that say that it does work if they see some references to, to it not working. So they post it there, but we also have a lot of stuff on YouTube. So a lot of this stuff is repeated, you know, fruit is the devil didn't work for Adam and Eve won't work for you. You know, I go in, into that things you should do before taking ketone ester, like stop drinking orange juice. Like, Hey, I've got my, my father-in-law has brain fog. Uh, he drinks orange juice every day. Will the ketone ester help him? Yeah, maybe, but stop the orange juice. See how you feel. <laughs> you know, things you can do, getting a continuous glucose monitor. I think everyone should get that. Everyone should one time have a patch on their shoulder for two weeks and just see what affects their blood yeah. sugar. And I took it and I'm keto and vegan too, but that's not relevant. And I was flat for two weeks. And then, you know, right at the end, I, I had a low carb tortilla in as, as part of the meal and my blood sugar spiked. So I knew, oh, I guess that low carb tortilla isn't so low carb after all. And just see the see what's happening to your blood sugar, and you might see patterns. Oh, I fall asleep at 7 p.m. Oh, the day that I had the blood sugar spike and crash happens to be the day that I crashed. You know, there's a whole bunch of things you can you can do. And, and on that YouTube channel, I just talk about uh, different things you can try. And I interview also different professional athletes or different doctors that are using it for their Tour de France athletes. Um, so yeah, so we're all over the place. Online. You know, people are, are, are listening and not watching. I'm applauding. Yeah, everybody should do a CGM at least once to find out that one food that you never thought messes with your sugars yeah. that can mess with your sugars. And um, it's just really good information because of things you, you know, like you said, things you never thought of. Um, but again, I, I can, I use the product I use it for me. I use it for my patients for a lot of different things. And I think it's, again, I 
I don't bring people on who I don't believe in their science or the product. So I really appreciate you coming on. Um, enjoy, we're doing this right before the holiday. So have a good holiday. And uh, any final last words on ketones here? I think that's it. I think, oh, well, we have a snake water coming up too. It's a, it's a ketone ester plus nootropics. And that'll be a 12 ounce drink. No caffeine because I'm anti-caffeine, but it's going to light you up like a Red Bull monster energy drink. But be it'll be very sweet. It'll be a lot on the sweet side because we have to cover up all the 10 <laughs> nootropics that are in there. But that'll be super fun as well. That's snake water that'll also be on ketoneaid.com. You bring up nootropics at the last minute, which is a whole, that's a whole nother like hour lecture, which uh, we'll get into it at another time. But yeah. Again, I'm, I'm glad seeing you again. I'm sure we'll hang, we'll meet up at another conference. Enjoy your holiday. And thanks for coming on the Life Optimized podcast. We're going to put all the notes that we talked about, the links to Ketone Aid on the website. Um, and, and so you can reach out and ask them any questions. So tune in for the next episode coming soon.